chapter 10, verse 13, is where we last left off. And Jesus was talking about adultery. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them, not baptize them. And it's interesting because I say that kind of statement too, because if you go to Luke chapter 18, scripture with scripture, Luke chapter 18, verse number, we want Verse 15, and they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. So when they brought babies to Jesus, they didn't baptize them. Infant baptism, he laid their hands on them. And there are some churches that have a dedicated service. And we did it for my daughter. Is the, the, the parents would bring their baby. They would bring it up before the church and they will dedicate their baby, their, their child, to the service of the Lord. Hannah did it with the Samuel. Mary did it with Jesus. They did it with John the Baptist. It's a biblical thing to be found in, in the Bible that a baby is brought before God saying, I am going to give this child to Jehovah, I'm going to give this child to God for the service of God, and you don't find it in the Baptist churches. You'll find Easter and Christmas. That's sad. I've even, back to Mark, I've even seen, heard, you know, some preachers, you know, they rebuke it. Well, Mark 10 Luke 18, they brought infants and children to Jesus. And he laid their hands on them. That they should touch them. And the disciples rebuked those that brought them. And those that brought them would be parents, grandparents, aunts. So you see this attitude with the disciples again. Remember the feeding the 5,000? Remember the feeding the 4,000? All these people come running. Jesus, send them away. Get them out of here. We don't want them here. Now, parents and grandparents and family members bring these babies, these little children, up to Jesus. And the rebuke and, and, and the disciple, no, oh, no. Don't do this. I mean, the disciples do a complete 180 turn in the book of Acts. They're going out to everybody. Now, watch this. See if you recognize somebody. And, the, and they brought young children to him. That they should touch them. And you get in a long line, and the man in the red suit picks the child up, puts him on your lap, and little boy, little girl, will you tell me what you want for Christmas? Santa Claus. But nobody rebukes Santa Claus. I did a couple years ago. You would. I walked up to the Santa Claus. I said, let me see your ID. Oh, I can't do that. Security! What are you doing? This guy's an apostle. He won't show me his ID. Identity theft. Because I just saw a Santa at another store. Don't you realize? Santa Claus imitating Jesus Christ. And the world says nothing. You have a world of pedophiles out there. And you let your child get picked up and put on their lap. And you don't even know who that is. And you got Christian parents and Christian church that won't let you give your child to Jesus. What on earth is happening? But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. 
for such is the kingdom of God. It's an innocency. Listen, you're not going to run around having little baby children with wings. What the count of, of the description of the kingdom of heaven is innocency. Purity. Trust and faithfulness. Coming and running up to God the Father. Whatever I say to you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little. Now, we are not in the church age. Christ has not gone to the cross. There is no death, barren resurrection. This is for Jewish people under the law. <clears throat> As little children shall not enter therein. I'm not saying little children can't be saved. I'm not saying children can't be saved. But we're not in that context now. Because I was in a church one time and they quoted Mark 10, 14, you know, for salvation of children. Something little... No, if you want to do it the, the biblical church way of the seven churches before the rapture is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto salvation, it's not by conduct. This is by conduct. We're not saved by conduct. We are saved by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, not of works, at least any man should boast. And he took him up in his arms, like Santa Claus imitates, put his hands on them, and blessed them. How does Santa Claus make you happy? He takes you up in his arms, puts you on his lap, puts his hand on you, and gives you a lollipop, and gives you a, a little gift. He get, you know. Isn't that interesting? And when they've gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him. And asked us, good master, not Lord. Now the Jehovah Witnesses will run you to this guy. If Jesus is not God, okay, so let's look at it. So he says, good master, that's rabbi, that's not Lord. He said he kneeled down to him. You ever wonder if maybe they knelt down to the, to the rabbis? Like the Catholic Church does? Or a matter, at least he was respectful? What Because we're going to see where he stands with God. What shall I do to inherit the kingdom, the eternal life? Now, what would you say to somebody today? You're not going to say what Jesus said before Calvary. This is what Jesus said before his death. Under the law, the Jewish people. You're not going to say this today. If you say this today, and somebody gets saved by doing what Jesus told this young man, they're going to die and they're going to end up in hell. And they're going to wonder in hell why I got saved and I'm burning in hell forever. Did I not give money to charity? Did I not give good 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 help? Did I not help ladies across the street? Did I not join a a, 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 a a program? Did I not help in a program? Did I not give? Did I not do? Did I not? Did I not? Did I not? Why am I burning in hell when my religion has told me to do what, God, what Jesus said? Red letters. Jesus said it, so it must be so. And you end up in hell for all eternity. Church ages believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. No works. If your salvation relies on you believed on Jesus and you did, you're not saved. Is you believed on Jesus Christ and what Jesus did. The merits of Jesus alone. This is not church doctrine. 
This is the danger when you say, well, every every Christian, every everyone in the Old Testament is Christian. Okay? That's the danger. Because there are no Christians unto any of them. This is not the Christian form of salvation. This is a Jewish under the law salvation. And Jesus said to him, get red letter, here we go. Why callest thou me good? There is no good but one that is God. So, okay, there's a Jehovah Witness. Well, you see what he said? Well, Jesus already knew the standing of this. This guy and the nation of Israel does not believe who Jesus is. To, to this young man, Jesus is a rabbi. He's a master. He's a good teacher, but he's not God. So Jesus addresses him as such. Jesus will be who you want Jesus to be. You want Jesus to be a Catholic Jesus? He will be a Catholic Jesus to you, and you'll die and go to hell. You want a hallelujah Pentecostal Jesus? That's what Jesus will give to you. But Paul tells us in the church age, there's another Jesus, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit for one. Why did Jesus say that there's none good but God? He's good. You don't believe who he is. That simple? And they don't believe it. I don't, they want some kind of mumble jumble, hallelujah, stand on your head, bounce up and down, land on the moon, and end up on Pluto. They can't take the simple fact that this, this man just doesn't believe. As a fact is, they don't believe. We had him come to the door the other day. I said, listen, got right in their face. I was nice. Believe me, I was nice. My daughter was a witness. I said, Tommy said to Jesus with no rebuke, my Lord, my God. And I told him, I said, I was nice. You can't believe it, but I was nice. I told them both. I said, you need to get off my property. Don't you bring that Jesus is not God on this thing. The Bible says that Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And tons of other places in the Bible proclaim that Jesus is God. Get off my property. Oh, and then they got rude at me. I wasn't rude at all. And I was. it was simple. I gave them Bible verses. All right, so thou knowest the commandments. Here we go, ready? Too bad America don't. Too bad you can't take those commandments and nail them on the courthouse wall. Imagine the guy with handcuffs going and say, thou shalt not steal. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Used to be a crime in America to commit adultery. You would go, it's still on the books in California, believe it or not. You can go to jail for adultery in California, but they don't back it up. And the Ten Commandments are not found under... Well, what do you say? I said you should put them on there. You should put them on the Ten Commandments where the prisoners are. I will call everybody in the courtroom that day. Everybody, all right, all rise. Okay, we're going to read the Ten Commandments before we sit down. As the honor judge sits down, we'll read the Ten Commandments every single day. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We just talked about adultery. Do not kill. Now there's a Jehovah. The Bible says thou shalt not kill. How do you explain God telling Israel to go into the promised land, Canaan, and wipe them all out? And then go read Joshua. From the early context of Jericho. Explain to me how God allowed David to be a warrior. But when he killed Uriah, then there was a problem. He allowed Joab to be a warrior until Joab killed two men. Not in wartime. 
Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. That means don't lie. Jehovah Witnesses come to your door, they're bearing you a lie. If you get the Mormons, I guarantee I never had a Mormon come to my door. I, I, it's going to be a lie. Somebody tells you to pray to Mary. That's a lie. If somebody tells you, say this prayer and you're, you're, you're going to be saved, that's a lie. Somebody says, we got the world's greatest church. we got the greatest pastor. That's a lie. Defraud not. Deceive not. Honor thy father and mother. That was plain and simple. You see, Jesus backed up what Moses brought that God wrote on those stones. Moses didn't write them. God wrote them. So the very fact is that Jesus says, there's none good but, but God. Jesus then quotes from himself, who is God, what he wrote down on stone for Moses. And the children of Israel since Exodus 20. And Paul will back up these commands without the Sabbath. And he answered and said unto him, Master, what happened to good? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at verse 17. Ask him, good master, what shall I do in here and during life? And he tells him all these commands. And he says, master, where did good go? Want to look for it? You get the magnifying glass? That's his attitude towards Jesus. You're just a rabbi. You're just a teacher. Did you see that? All these have I observed from my youth. And Jesus does not rebuke him in Matthew or Luke. Uh, excuse me, not Matthew. Uh, in Matthew, Luke, or Mark. He doesn't say, now wait a minute, young man, hold on. Let's break out the books. This man and the man named Job are two men in the Bible that are purely. And Job was before the law. I forget which chapter of Job says, if I bless my lips, if I have, you know, if I curse my people, if I have given unfair wages, if I have done this against my land, if I have done this against my wife, if I... Job and this man are pretty well off. Job stays right after losing his children. I would think a divorce of his wife or at least abandonment. And I'm assuming his children, seven children are killed, his crops and everything, though he gets it back. He's tormented by the devil from head to foot in pain. I can't think of the title right now, but there's a hymn about a man who wrote this hymn after his children drowned in a shipwreck. Huh? It is well with my soul. And his wife writes and says the cable can grant. The fact is, I'm the only one to survive. And Christians in the church and the world that you see in church are going to say, It is well with my soul. And they will get upset if the cable TV goes out. Mm -hmm. 
You better watch which hymns you sing. A lot of those hymns are not for you. Matter of fact, a lot of those hymns are just poems that somebody put to music. You imagine a lost man in church. Blessed is sure is Jesus is mine. Oh, for the glory in hell I'll be found. Have a sweet hour of prayer, and you don't even pray at all. I just love to tell this story, and you don't tell anybody about Jesus. This man's attitude, this young man's attitude, it's just anybody. He's going from good master, something dropped the good in Jesus' answer. You know what Jesus answered for Jesus to lose the good master? You know what it is? Have you ever been a public witness? I'll tell, I know exactly what changes man's attitude. Good master, what must I do go to heaven? Heck. Oh, master. What, what changed it? Jesus quoted scripture. That young man was offended at the Ten Commandments like the U.S. courts are offended at dealing with the Ten Commandments outside the courtroom. Jesus is going from good master to master because he quotes the Ten Commandments. And he doesn't quote all ten. Why? I know why. Do you know why? Conscience. And we're going to see it in a moment. See, you look at those Ten Commandments outside of Sabbath. You count them, wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, and five, six. Outside the, the, the Ten Commandments, removing the Sabbath, nine command, we're missing some. And the answer said, Master, all these have I observed. And in Matthew, he says, kept. Luke says, I kept. I've done it. I kept it. So observe in the Bible means kept. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him. See that past tense? That's the same past tense of John 3.16. That's past tense. And said unto him, One thing thou lackest. So he's not so perfect. Job wasn't so perfect. Go thy way. Look at that go. Jesus tells everyone to go. Sell whatsoever thou hast. Don't you do that for salvation today. And there are people who have. Get to the poor. By the way, this is, the, this is what happened in the early book of Acts for the church age. They sold everything they had and laid it at the apostles' feet. Don't you do that in the church age today. Unless specifically after salvation, after believing on Jesus, Jesus laid on your heart, but don't you do it for salvation. Give to the poor. That's what they do some do today. Called charity. And thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come. You're not going to have treasures in heaven if you end up in hell. Because you have relied on this to be your salvation in the church period. From Calvary to the rapture. This is not ours. This does not belong in teaching. Come, take up the cross. Christ hasn't been to the cross yet. You know, you know, you know, you know Jesus tell what the, what they know about the cross. Take a beating, carry that uh, that cross, make a mockery of yourself, and go and get dead. But take up the cross as mockery. 
Everybody sees you dragging that cross. And follow me. Become a mockery. And follow me. And he was sad at the saying and went away grieved. That's why. That's why he became good master and master. He gave him the Ten Commandments and he knew, he knew in his heart, the conscience said, coveting. Coveting. Now, look at Romans 7.7. 7. This is important. This you need to write down. This is a cross-reference you need not to forget. Romans 7, 7, the apostle Paul writes to the church and he said, What shall I say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law say, Thou shalt not covet. Lusting and coveting are the same thing. That's interesting because, you know, we take lust, and we think of something naughty and, and filthy and adultery and fornication and triple A. The Bible says, hey, one of us, all my treasure, all my money, all my football team, all my basketball team, all my riches, all my great things, all my toys, all my car, all my business, oh, look at all the things I got. That's a lust. That's coveting. That's what that guy is doing. He went to grave for he had great possessions. He's rich. And you want me to give it all up. And you want me to be a mockery. From wealth of clothing to rags. And then you want me to follow you. I mean like those men over there. <laughs> And can you imagine the, the, the motley crew that Jesus had of his disciples? Listen, they're not wearing what the Catholic Church is painting them to be wearing. I guarantee Peter, Andrew, James, and John had these big knives on their side. Because that's a fisherman. Now, I don't know what the treasures and the accountants want back there. That would have been Matthew. And I don't know what the other occupations of, of the disciples were and all that, but Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Okay? Now we're coming to a transition from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and Jesus says, You know what? It's going to get to a point. Not impossible. But not many rich people are going to go to heaven. So you can rule out the teaching that all are going to heaven. No. There'll be rich Christians, but there'll be rich lost people too. And the very fact is the man that tore down all his, his, his barns and built start centers died and went to hell. The rich man that lived in the in the luxury before Lazarus, the rich, the poor man, ended up in hell. Abraham was rich and went to Abraham's bosom, and the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again, and said unto them, "Now the disciples are astonished because in the Old Testament, if you were rich and blessed." You were of God. That's where the teaching comes from. The Apostle Paul, beaten, naked, without food, shipwrecks, living in jail, had a heavenly bank account. And there were kings and princes and, and queens that uh, he preached to that died and went to hell. 
Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? See, you either got to put your faith in money and gems and gold and silver, or you got to put your faith and trust in God. Many give up God for the wealth. It is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle, boy, here we go, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And the scholars help the rich people to profess that in Jerusalem there is this gate they call the needle. And the camels will kneel down and go through this gate. I read Nehemiah, I mean, excuse, uh, yeah, Nehemiah today. I read Nehemiah chapter 3, and there was no needle gate. You made up a gate. You made up a Bible doctrine, like say this prayer so your rich friends can get into a heaven that you're lying, deceiving, and lying about that they won't make. What Jesus said for a camel to go through an eye of a needle is exactly what he's saying. You take a threader's needle and a camel can get through that needle as, as easier than rich man to get to heaven. That's exactly what Jesus said. It was not ever meant to be taken literal. I mean, if I were to tell you to go out there and hit, hit the road, you're not going to go out there and get on your knees and hit the road. And you get in your car and say, come on, hit the gas. You put your foot on the pedal. You don't put your foot on the gas. It's not to be taken literal, but Bible scholars mess with the Bible. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, not to Jesus, who then could be saved? Again, the Old Testament mark is you were rich, you were saved. That has carried over to the church age today, but it's not so. Some of the greatest Christians, some of the greatest saints in the church age period do not sit on clothed, padded pews. They sit on a tree stump, a rock, a mud. They hide from the government authorities to have their church. I, I love it. I, you know, I get these churches, they, they, they bless themselves with their pews, and I go on Facebook on Sunday, and I'll see a church, and they're sitting in those little white chairs. And there's probably more love and more Holy Spirit in that church than your padded pew on your padded behind. I know a church. Well, our pews are the original pews. And like, yeah, so what? Who cares? The pew don't make nothing. Then Peter began to say, Lo, we have left all and follow thee. True. Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that left house, a brother, sister, father, mother, wife, children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospel. Okay, the gospel. You can apply that to the church. That can be applied to the church. Because there are Christians and saints who have left house. But many don't. God told me to go to Florida and I didn't go. Eventually God said go back, go to Florida. And I left. Brethren. There are brethren that I left. Because they won't walk right. They won't, they won't have the right Bible. They won't. Alright, see you later. Goodbye. I got one sister, she's Catholic, and I'm a Catholic bad. Okay, fine, go ahead. My father, I witnessed to him. He's the first person I witnessed to him. And then we witnessed to him, we witnessed to him, we witnessed to him. 
And I went to Florida, and I sent pastors to him when he was he was in a, a, a nursing home, and he rejected outright, and he's died, and probably in hell. My mother, she was lost. A year before my wife died, she got saved. And we have wonderful, great talk. And Stu is not. Stu acknowledges the fact is, I can call my mom and we can talk about Jesus. And I remember a little boy, we were downstairs. My mom was doing the laundry. I was doing something. My mom was unsaved and I was unsaved. And I said, Mom, is that styling? I said, did you come with, it, with an instruction book for me? And she'd be laughing at that today. She says, no. And yet, it came with a Bible. Or wife. There are some men in the ministry, their wife is, they had to leave. Or they, their wife left them. And then the scholars and the educated, you know, ruined their whole life. Paul writes to the Christian, hey, there's got to be a separation. Let it there be a separation. Sometimes your children, you guys, you know what? Okay, you guys are gonna, and it's hard. Or lands. There are Christians who are, who are for the sake of Christ and the gospel that family traditions and family inheritance and family land. No, you're not getting it, Christian. Okay, well. For my sake, don't give it up for to be an idiot. Don't give it up for the name of your pastor. Don't give it up for the name of your church. Don't give it up for the name of Baptist. For Jesus. And the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus suffered and died. And was buried and rose again. But be warned. There be warned because Paul has told us there is another gospel, and there are people giving things up for that other gospel. There will be no reward. I'm sorry, but that's the Bible. It may be a good uh, organization. It may be a good charity. But if it's not for Jesus and the gospel. Be careful your missionaries too. Make sure your missionaries are gospel centered. We were in the church one time and they said, we're going to make shoe boxes. We're going to, you know, little crayons and socks and stuff like that. Our family made up one sock and all, And we put gospel tracks in it and we were rebuked by the pastor. Well, I ain't supporting that no more. Sometimes you got to realize when the truth happens. All right. You're going to get right? No. Well, no. We're going to keep on doing what we're doing. Okay, fine. There's a lot of churches I left because of that. I don't attend church, but I ain't doing the Easter thing on Easter. I'll attend church on, on if it's Christmas or Christmas Eve, but I ain't doing your Christmas. I'm in church because the Bible says be in church. I don't know what you're doing. But he shall receive a hundredfold now and in this time. Houses. Brethren. But see, you see the church age though? We get a mansion. We're not getting houses. Those houses belong for the new earth, the children of Israel. See, it didn't go all the way, did it? Brethren, sisters, mothers, children. It's funny, it doesn't say fathers. Did you read that? Look at verse 29. Brethren, sisters, father. Mother, wife. Brethren, sisters, mothers, children. Where is the father? On the throne. So 
something is going to be up about that new earth. But I'm, I'm not going to say there's going to be no fatherly men, but where is father? Children and lands with persecution. And the world to come eternal life. And so even now it's saying there's a persecution. Christian life, Christ life, Jehovah life is not easy. In the world to come, eternal life. That's the new world. That's the new earth. New heavens. New Jerusalem. But many that are first shall be last, and the last first. 